Hello and welcome to the lecture on uh, Lighthouse Project at Chennai. My name is Shailesh Agarwal, Executive Director of Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, and I'm going to educate you all through this presentation about the field level implementation of innovative construction system being used in this Lighthouse project, including design bases, materials, manufacturing, structural drawings, detailing, and actual site photographs explaining the different construction stages. The outline of my lecture is as follows, starting from Global Housing Technology Challenge India uh, and Lighthouse Projects, the technology in terms of structural elements, namely foundation, structural system, floor slabs, and wall panels will be discussed, followed by construction activities at site. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs organized Global Housing Technology Challenge India uh, in 2019 and, uh, and uh, Construction Technology India Expo Exposition come Exhibition uh, was uh, organized during Global Housing Technology Challenge, which was inaugurated by Honorable uh, Prime Minister of India. The objective of Global Housing Technology India was to identify and shortlist a basket of construction systems which can help build maximum number of houses in minimum time and at minimum cost. Through this challenge, we could create a basket of 54 new innovative construction technologies, which are broadly classified or categorized into these six broad categories, which are written here. Uh, there are two categories of precast concrete construction system, which is uh, 3D volumetric and uh, another one is 2D planner. And in addition to these two categories, there are four other categories, namely steel structural system and cold form steel structural system, prefabricated sandwich panel system and engineered formwork system, as well as stay in place formwork system. Today, uh, I'm going to discuss with you precast concrete construction system in detail. Let me uh, tell you about the six lighthouse projects, which are right now uh, being implemented in different states of India. Uh, uh, this table shows the, uh, the, the city uh, where these uh, projects are uh, uh, being undertaken at present. And as you can see, at all these six places, more than 1,000 houses are being constructed with those six broad categories and with six distinct technologies under each broad category uh, is being used in these projects. So today I'm covering uh, the project Lighthouse project at Chennai, uh, where we are using the gas concrete construction technology. Uh, let me uh, very briefly give you uh, the project brief. Uh, the, the project comprises of 12 blocks and each block is of six story. These are the blocks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And in addition to the housing, we are also providing physical infrastructure as well as social infrastructure. If you look at the typical floor plan, at each floor, uh, there are 16 dwelling units. Let's have a look on the dwelling unit, uh, individual uh, dwelling unit plan. And as you can see, each dwelling unit comprises of one hall, one bedroom, a kitchen, bath, and WC with a with separate access to bath and WC from both the rooms. Also, one thing which is noteworthy here is that all these dwelling unit plans conform to the uh, space norms given in National Building Code 2016. National Building Code 2016 specifies minimum room sizes along with width of a staircase, height of kitchen, uh, and other space parameters for EWS housing. So all these uh, dwelling unit plans comply with those national building uh, code norms. In addition uh, to national building code conformance, uh, we are also uh, incorporating other special features such as green rating as per GRIHA. Uh, also, the renewable resources are being encouraged in terms of rainwater harvesting and solar lighting, solid waste management and the sewage treatment plan with recycling of wastewater is also included in the project. 
firefighting services as per NBC norms are also included. Let me now uh, give you the brief about the technology. First, I will tell you in, in general the technology being used and then we will uh, get down to the specific. Dear Technogrise, we all know the way construction takes place world over. So on the left hand side, if you, two, if you see these two pictures, which shows the prevalent construction practices and what are those uh, prevalent construction practices? One is load bearing structure where walls are constructed brick by brick by laying bricks and creating a wall and over those walls are cast in situ uh, RCC slab or sloping roofs are laid. So that is uh, one prevalent construction system and other one uh, is RCC framed structure where uh, cast in C2 beam column uh, columns are cast and then slab is laid and then uh, walls are filled as infill walls. So these are two typical construction systems and all of you uh, know that these systems uh, over the years have become unsustainable because uh, there is wastage of material. They make use of uh, material which are based on finite uh, natural resources. Uh, they also, you know, uh, most of these projects uh, are caught in time overrun and cost overrun. Uh, I mean to say by time overrun and cost overrun, when you start a project and by the end, uh, by the time project is completed, uh, there is uh, there is a you know uh, time uh, overrun, time overrun and cost overrun. Uh, suppose the project was started uh, with a uh, X amount. The moment you uh, uh, by the time you uh, finish the project, the cost escalates many times, and it happens because these construction practices are uh, primarily slow in uh, nature. Also, it has been found that. Uh, 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 there, there, there is noise pollution, there is air pollution, a lot of dust is being created uh, uh, when we use these construction systems. So friends, uh, we need to replace these construction practices in vogue by innovative construction systems which are speedier, sustainable and amenable uh, to our environment. And one such category is precast concrete construction. As you can see, what about, you know, replacing this cast in C2 uh, this is a beam and this is a column by factory made beam and columns. So uh, this uh, on right hand side, what you see is schematic diagram uh, here in Chennai, what we are doing is we are using, uh, th this is a column and uh, this is a beam. These are RCC hollow columns and uh, precast RCC beams, which are cast either in the factory or in a casting yard near to the site under control conditions and then they are transported to the site assembled in such a fashion and over which are uh, again a uh, partially precast slab uh, uh, is laid. Uh, similarly other structural elements such as precast staircase is again uh, cast in the factory and then assembled at the site and all these things are then bed jointed. Uh, you can have uh, this uh, infill uh, here in this project, we are using AAC block. Otherwise, you can also um, replace this AAC walls or uh, masonry wall by uh, drywall, which can be uh, manufactured in the in the factory or in the casting yard or by a concrete uh, wall as well. Uh, the foundation uh, here is conventional because uh, depending upon the soil condition, soil strata, water table, uh, foundation is kept conventional. So we are trying to replace our construction systems which exist uh, by, 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 by precast concrete components, structural components, which are made in, in the factory under control conditions. Now, let me uh, explain you briefly uh, uh, the various structural elements. This typical slide, which I also showed you in the previous, uh, just to explain you, uh, what is building? Building comprises of a substructure and a superstructure. Substructure is nothing but a foundation and uh, uh, and a column or a pedestal up to plinth. And over plinth, these vertical elements, which are called columns, and then these horizontal elements, which are called beams, are laid over which a floor or slab is laid. So this 
beam column system is called structural system. This is called floor and slab, and this is called walling system. Uh, so I will explain you all these systems one by one. I just wanted to explain you that uh, this structural system is nothing but but the skeleton of your building. So this framing, beam column framing is nothing but a structural system. So foundation, as I told you earlier, that foundation we are using conventional here. And again, based on the geotechnical uh, investigation, bearing capacity of the soil, uh, the, 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 the soil strata, subsur subsurface soil strata, the depth of water table, uh, the, 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 the foundation is decided. Uh, it is then designed. The depth of foundation is also decided. And uh, uh, then uh, the, these foundations are laid. Here, we are using isolated and uh, combined footing, which is a conventional RCC footing. And once the foundation is laid over that, you can uh, lay the plinth, uh, pedestal, RCC uh, columns. They are also known as stem columns. Then uh, once the, the, as you can see in this slide, uh, this is your uh, foundation and over the foundation, a pedestal, which is also known as stem column that is raised up to plinth level and plinth level is the level, uh, which is your natural or finished ground level. And over that plinth level, uh, you connect all the columns by plinth beams. Okay, so foundation is connected to the plinth through these stem columns, and in this project, these stem columns are also cast in the castic yard. So under control condition, these kind of stem columns are cast. Similarly, these beams are also cast in the casting yard, and both of uh, these columns and plinth beam are then uh, you know aligned, erected, and uh, they are wet right. I also want to stress here that in order to have better seismic resistance, it is always ad advisable to you know connect all the footings if they are uh, you know scattered footings at the plinth level by plinth uh, B. This will ensure integral box-like action and will help in improving the seismic resistance of a building greatly. Now, as I explaining you, uh, these beam column or skeleton or frame is called a structural system. Uh, structural system is uh, is the skeleton of a building, and uh, this is primarily responsible for transferring the load of the building to the foundation safely. So, if our structural system is not robust, uh, the building is bound to have uh, failures, or uh, you know, will not. Uh, uh, serve the purpose for which it is intended intended to. So here, uh, the system being used, uh, because it's a patented technology, uh, the system which is being used is Industrialized 3 as uh, prefab uh, system. Prefab means prefabricated system, where all these structural components, which I just explained you, columns, columns are vertical members, beam are horizontal members, and uh, shear walls, facades, slabs, and staircase, all of them are cast in the factory, then transported to the site, aligned, erected, and then uh, joined together to construct uh, the, the building, okay? And uh, in this project, we are using this filler. As you can see here, this is AAC block filler walls. The, uh, the, the variation could be, uh, instead of these AAC blocks, you can use the ready-made uh, wall, a concrete wall, which can be cast in the casting yard, or else you can use a dry wall, uh, dry walling system comprising of sandwich panel systems. Okay, but in this project, uh, we are using precast RCC column beam, partially precast slabs, and then once the skeleton is erected, then uh, the walls are of AAC blocks, which I will also explain you later. Uh, let's move to the another structural element, which is very important, and that is slab. Normally, the slab is cast in C2. Uh, in conventional system where uh, first uh, formwork, first shuttering is done, then formwork is laid over which reinforcement is laid and then uh, 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 cast in situ concreting is being done. What about changing, uh, you know, that cast in situ process by bringing uh, factory made uh, slabs and uh, just uh, putting them over uh, the, 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 the uh, beam column frame and then uh, doing the screen. So 
that is what is being done here you what you see here this is the slab which is the entire slab depending upon the size uh, of your uh, room or your size of your project these call, uh, these slabs are cast in the in the factory and uh, then uh, they are hoisted at the site then align and then uh, in order to have monolithic connections uh, the uh, screed you know screed is something which is a, um, a small uh, you know a thin concrete uh, layer with reinforcement uh, and the thickness is around 75 to 100 mm to create a monolithic connection what happens this is a beam and there is a column and when the slab is laid uh, you need to connect this slab with this uh, beam and column and therefore what you do is you put a concrete layer with reinforcement and fill these joints in situ uh, that will ensure integral monolithic action monolithicity means here that or in case of earthquake or in case of any 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 other load the building uh, will act together in a box like fashion uh, let's move to the next structural element, which is wall. And uh, here, the walls are uh, made of autoclaved aerated concrete blocks, which I will also explain when uh, I will show you the side photographs. Uh, these AAC blocks are replacement uh, to the, the, the burnt clay brick. They are lightweight. And uh, why they are lightweight? Because uh, here you don't use aggregates, but that aggregate is replaced by uh, foam. And uh, the being light in weight, uh, they offer a lot of advantages. Uh, the dead load of building is considerably reduced and uh, uh, their size is also uh, larger than your brick size. So you can quickly uh, uh, lay the infill walls. Uh, but uh, one thing to remember here is that uh, these infill, uh, these AC blocks uh, uh, can only be used as non-load bearing infill walls. Uh, before I get into the construction sequence, uh, uh, the advantages of uh, these uh, factory made building components are uh, written here and uh, the advantages are so many. Uh, some of them are written. I will try to explain you them uh, one by one. First of all, uh, if you compare the cast in situ construction with uh, the factory made uh, construction, you will uh, realize that uh, quality control and uh, is better when you do something in the factory because there you are doing under control condition in the factory if you manufacture something uh, you do it under control condition so uh, building components are made in the factory uh, in a similar fashion as you do in an automobile in the, uh, industry uh, so each building component uh, uh, is uh, you know as far as dimensional accuracy is concerned as far as material consumption is concerned as far as uh, you know uh, uh, reinforcement uh, other structural details are concerned all of uh, them are maintained at a higher standards and once you maintain the quality at higher standards what happens once the building is put to in, put to use or those construction um, you know elements structural elements are put to use they will not require any maintenance or they will require less maintenance and less maintenance means uh, the life cycle cost of the building will get reduced there will not be uh, uh, you know leakages and uh, the building will behave uh, the better in case of any external uh, you know in case of uh, disaster secondly uh, when you do everything in the factory, um, uh, naturally uh, you are, uh, there is considerable reduction in uh, pollution, uh, whether it is dust, whether it is air, whether it is noise. Also, because you are using uh, cement concrete and uh, cement uh, is based on a natural resource, there is significant reduction in uh, wastage of these precious resources because you are optimizing use of the material. Also, uh, when we use concrete, water is significantly used for uh, curing of component here. Uh, in these systems, there is significant reduction uh, in use of uh, you know, water. Friends, also, it has been found during COVID time that uh, safety of workforce is sometimes compromised at uh, site. So once you take the entire construction activities in the, in the factory, you ensure safety and uh, well-being of the workforce which is being put uh, for the for the project 
Uh, also, uh, the speed is also one of the most important parameter, uh, uh, which is uh, the, which which can be achieved uh, uh, by employing these kind of construction practices. Because uh, beforehand, you decide everything. Um, so that, that is why these are called pre-engineered uh, buildings as well. So you procure all the elements, all the materials, um, you pre-plan everything and once everything is planned, then you you can start, you know, manufacturing those components and the entire process can be industrialized, automated, uh, so that, uh, you know, speed is achieved. And once you finish the project, uh, well within the time, you save on cost as well, uh, as well also the, the there is, um, you know, the, 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 the the clauses like cost escalations can be can be avoided. Uh, limitations. Um, uh, there, there are a lot of questions being asked that these technologies are expensive. But let me tell you here that uh, they are capital uh, intensive. Uh, to start with, but once you uh, have sufficient number of houses of sufficient number of construction activities using that technology, the, the, the rate uh, uh, goes down. So, uh, if you give a minimum number of uh, houses or a minimum, um, you know, a critical mass, uh, the technologies, uh, the, the, this system becomes uh, comparable with conventional cost of construction. Another uh, limitation, if uh, we need to say, uh, is skill, use of skilled manpower. Uh, uh, so because all these components are done in the factory and uh, under highly controlled conditions using sophisticated equipments and uh, sophisticated processes, uh, therefore you require skilled manpower. Now, uh, the, most of these projects, because they are uh, using uh, new technologies and uh, this kind of mass scale uh, fuel implementation of uh, these new technologies uh, taking place for the first time. So all these lighthouse projects are awarded on uh, design and uh, build basis and design and build basis means that uh, uh, we provide the plot with the uh, specifications and uh, list of uh, international national standard and then ask the agency to design um, as per uh, these specifications and uh, national and international standards, and then uh, build uh, the structure. So that is why it is called design and build basis, which uh, is very popular in case of highways. And now uh, the same is being uh, promoted and uh, being uh, you know advocated in 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 housing construction as well. So here, this project is being done by BG Shirke, Construction Technology Private Limited, which is one of the leading uh, agency uh, in India uh, as far as the public construction is concerned. So the design philosophy uh, is very important whenever a project is uh, undertaken. Uh, you need to first spell out what is your design philosophy. So uh, in case of a building, uh, what comes to mind uh, is that the building should be able to serve the purpose for which it is intended to build during its service life. So uh, there are criteria like uh, limited state of serviceability, limited state of collapse. Uh, so that, uh, that, that that kind of limited states need to be incorporated in design uh, philosophy. So um, the, the, also the structure which is being uh, designed should perform satisfactorily during the uh, its intended life as per the, 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 the guidelines which are laid down in the, the relevant Indian standard. So here primarily it is a concrete structure. So uh, there is a Indian standard IS456. Uh, so uh, the design philosophy uh, is based on uh, Indian standard 456. Then uh, there is a limited state method which is uh, adopted and that limited state method ensures uh, the intended durability and service um, uh, uh, serviceability requirements. Also, there are other standards such as 13920, which is a ductility code uh, to ensure ductile behavior of a building during pathway. And that code is also very important because that makes your building uh, that makes your building uh, you know ductile, and uh, that will ensure that uh, there is no loss of life in the event of an earthquake. Limited state, uh, when we are using limited state, uh, there are 
several provisions that uh, what should be the water uh, cement ratio, what should be the minimum cement content, what should be the minimum percentage of steel, how to detail the reinforcement, how uh, reinforcement is curtailed, uh, and how uh, the, the, the reinforcement, which is, uh, um, the, you know, uh, how the reinforcements are being connected. So all these things need to be incorporated. Let me uh, briefly tell you about the water cement ratio and minimum cement content because whenever you are doing a concrete uh, structure, you need to, you know, have a mixed design and in mixed design, whenever you do a mixed design, minimum cement content uh, is, uh, you know, laid down by Indian standards so that need to be uh, that need to be kept. So that minimum cement content for, uh, suppose you're doing M20 concrete, so the uh, so it is 300 kg per meter cube. So that need to be maintained. Another thing is water cement ratio. What, what happens when you do a construction uh, at uh, site? Uh, it is found that uh, in order to make concrete work workable, we keep on adding water. But adding that water makes your concrete very. So maximum water uh, cement ratio need to be ensured. Also, uh, to avoid uh, bad design uh, to avoid bad detailing minimum percentages of steel uh, that is a bare minimum whether it is required or not but that minimum percentage of steel is to be given to ensure uh, the durability and uh, serviceability so based on this the design basis let me just briefly tell you uh, the, the you know the, first of all uh, soil investigation is done and based on soil investigation bearing capacity uh, of uh, that area uh, is found and that based on that bearing capacity normally foundation is designed and also the depth of foundation is decided so in in case of chennai the safe bearing capacity is 25 ton per meter square and uh, depth of foundation varies from 2.5 to 3.5 meters then based on this uh, safe bearing capacity, there are Indian standards available for, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, footings. Here we are using shallow foundation, which means isolated and combined footing. So there is Indian standard 1080 and 1904, uh, with which the foundations based on this uh, safe bearing capacity and depth of foundation are designed. Also, another design parameter is uh, the, the grade of concrete, because here we are using uh, precast uh, concrete. So the normally, for precast concrete because elements are thinner so higher grade of concrete is required for foundation uh, you can um, uh, do it with m20 but here m35 is being used because chennai is a coastal region and also in the soil um, uh, there are chloride contents and chloride contents are uh, you know deleterious uh, to uh, to the, the the concrete and the reinforcement and therefore higher grade of concrete higher the grade of concrete you make the concrete more impervious then um, the structure frame, uh, the, for the design basis for structure frame is, uh, you know, it's a dense concrete and uh, basically um, the advantage of this technology is that uh, the, the, the columns are hollow and those columns uh, are erected with beam and then uh, there is bed joint. Uh, let me tell you here that uh, whenever we do precast construction, there are uh, two kinds of joints. One is bed joint and one is dry joint. Dry joint means that you connect beam column slam and other things using nut bolt or uh, uh, using uh, nut bolt. Uh, I would say, or there's another thing is where you have this kind of system, which I will show you in subsequent slide, where you have these shells, you have double wars protruding from slab, column, and uh, you know, uh, from beams, and then you lay a screen and do the wet jointing. So, this wet jointing is preferred in, in, in a country like India because uh, uh, we have rains and uh, our country is also seismically prone. So, this kind of Wet jointing will ensure monolithic joints. So monolithic city of joints is the most important thing when we are talking about precast concrete construction. So wet jointing will ensure monolithic city. Another thing when you are doing concreting of jointing, it is very difficult because these joints are uh, very small and concrete, you know, compaction of concrete, putting that concrete uh, into those joints, ensuring, uh, you know, proper curing and the setting of concrete, uh, all these things uh, are uh, something which need to be attended to. So what is being done, whenever we do the, uh, the wet jointing, we normally use uh, grouts or otherwise we use self-compacting concrete. 
I have a slide on self-compacting concrete as well, which I will also explain. So, one the self-compacting concrete is a flowable concrete which can directly be put into the joints and uh, uh, it will set and uh, gain early strength and that will ensure monolithic rigid joints. So, um, when we design the building, we design the buildings for the loads. So, depending upon the, the, the uses of building, because it's a residential building, so you will have a live load for this, uh, for which we have a Indian standard, number one. Uh, secondly, uh, there are other loads uh, like seismic load, uh, earthquake load, wind load, and uh, if you are doing something in the hilly regions, so you may have uh, snow loads also. If you are doing something in coastal region, then you can have, uh, you will have, uh, you know, um, coast cyclone, uh, cyclonic winds. So that also need to be incorporated here. So being in Chennai, and uh, what you see in the right hand side is the uh, wind hazard map of India, which is primarily based on National Building Code 2016. And uh, this is from Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council's Vulnerability Atlas. So so um, you uh, see this uh, map and from this map, you pick up the wind velocity, which is uh, 50 meter per second for Chennai case. And uh, then based on that basic wind speed, you, uh, you know, find out design with this thing. And again, this formula is given in IS 875 part 3, which is the Indian standard. And as I was telling you, if you are constructing a building in cyclonic uh, region, so there is a factor um, uh, which, um, uh, you know, uh, which gives due consideration uh, if you are if you are constructing or building a structure in cyclonic region. So uh, there are four factors, uh, this coefficient size vector, depending on height and size of the building, what kind of topography and importance of the building. So you find out design wind um, speed and then design wind speed uh, when uh, can be converted into wind pressure and that wind pressure when multiplied by the exposed area will give you the wind load for which your building needs to be designed. Now, the next important load is earthquake load. And what you see in the, the right hand side is the earthquake hazard map of India. And uh, India is divided into four zones. Uh, Chennai falls in zone three as per seismic zone. And this map, which is shown here, is taken from uh, Vulnerability Atlas of India, which is uh, published by Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council. Uh, India being a seismic prone country and uh, looking at the history of uh, earthquakes in India and uh, incurring uh, losses to lives and uh, property, it's very important that whatever building we design, it has to comply with the existing national standards and the design should be based on uh, those standards. So here, uh, most important thing uh, is that you need to design your building uh, ensuring ductile behavior and ductility ensures that uh, in the event of an earthquake, uh, uh, the, the, the inhabitants of the building get sufficient time uh, to come out of the building. And, uh, you know, ductility means that sudden collapse of building is prevented. So that is first and foremost thing. And there is a uh, standard ductile detailing code is there. If you are, um, you know, doing a building in uh, reinforced concrete, then you need to, uh, you know, put in use 13920. Then uh, there is most important code, Indian standard, which is 1893-2016, which uh, gives you different factors, uh, uh, for uh, designing your ductile uh, structure, your, uh, you know, moment resting frames and uh, ordinary moment resting frames, RCC shear walls and things like that. So uh, here in uh, Chennai, the design basis is that the entire PCAS concrete construction or the entire building uh, is designed as a dual system with RCC structural walls, ductile RCC structural walls and special moment resting frames and the moment you uh, uh, invoke uh, special moment resting uh, frames uh, the response reduction factor which is very important uh, uh, is taken as five apart from this there are other factors uh, one is a tuning factor because it falls in the seismic zone three so the tuning factor is 0.16 building uh, I is the importance factor. Here it is taking slightly on a higher side, 1.2. Uh, and then uh, damping ratio is 5%. So based on these parameters, we can find out design, 
horizontal seismic coefficient. Again, this uh, the, uh, equation is given in IS1893, which says Z by 2, SA by G, I by R. So I is that importance factor, R is response reduction factor, Z is the joining factor, and SA by G is again, um, uh, is a design acceleration coefficient, which is, uh, you know, depending upon the soil condition and depending upon the time period of a building, you know, you find out SAG from a response spectra curve, uh, which is again given in 1893 and you ascertain design horizontal seismic coefficient. And this design horizontal coefficient, when multiplied by the seismic weight of the building, which is a vertical uh, load of the building, it will give you the horizontal shear for which your building needs to be designed. So I would again like to repeat this, that uh, we have to design our building for a horizontal load, which is, uh, you know, a fraction of your vertical load. And that fraction is uh, uh, found out uh, from this equation, which is dependent upon the zone in which your building is lying, depending upon the structural configuration, importance factor, and the kind of ductility and the kind of movement frame uh, the, you, you are using. Depending upon all those things, you can find out the base shear. And then that base shear is distributed along the height of the building, and then you carry out the structural analysis and design, which I will cover in the next slide. There are dedicated softwares nowadays available through which you can carry out the, the, the analysis. And uh, what is analysis? Analysis, structural analysis is something where when you apply the load, you will get uh, the bending moment, shear force, axial force, and other torsional forces and other forces for which each structural element can be designed uh, as per IS456. So um, uh, here the building is designed as a, uh, a moment resting uh, the frame, and uh, this is the, the base shear for which the building is to be designed. Also, um, uh, as I explained to you earlier, that uh, the slabs are precast, partially precast slabs are being used uh, with uh, the reinforcement, and uh, that reinforcement uh, is connected uh, uh, on site uh, through a screen to make it a composite structure. So, um, you know, composite frame is also uh, one of the, uh, the design basis criteria. Um, uh, for any analysis and design, uh, what is the grade of concrete is also very important. So here, M35 and M40, normally these are higher grade of concrete. And, and as I told you in the beginning, that whenever we are using uh, precast concrete construction, we use higher grade of concrete. And uh, here we are using M35 and M40. M40 grade. Just to explain you, M35 means 35 is the cube strength, and 35 means 35 newton per mm square is the strength of a cube uh, of this concrete grade. So, uh, floor elements are uh, M35, and uh, vertical load bearing elements are um, M40 grade. Based on uh, this uh, design basis, uh, as I told you, that uh, a model is created uh, in the computer uh, through CAD softwares, and uh, there are empty number of softwares available nowadays. Uh, uh, some of them are written here, StatPro, ETAP, Safe, SAP, Abacus, and uh, uh, for this project, uh, ETAP, ETAP is the software which is being used. And uh, once you know the loads, uh, you know you know the dead load, live load, you know the earthquake load and build load, then you're building is analyzed and designed for so many load combinations. And if you, uh, you know, uh, wind load and uh, uh, earthquake load, one load acts at a time. So you have to design, you have a load combination, dead load plus live load, then plus minus, uh, you know, uh, earthquake load or plus minus uh, uh, wind load. So for these load combinations, so if we consider only earthquake load, there are 13 possible load combination for which building is analyzed. And then for the worst possible scenario, uh, your design is uh, carried out. Uh, also, uh, depending upon the configuration of your building, whether it is regular building, whether it is irregular building, uh, you need to carry out the static and dynamic analysis. Again, these softwares are uh, the, so good and uh, they help you in carrying out uh, um, static and dynamic analysis. And uh, um, another analysis criteria is linear and nonlinear. Again, IS1893 gives you criteria where when to carry out linear or when to carry out nonlinear um, analysis. So, based on these uh, softwares and based on these load combination and again you can uh, model your building uh, 3d so this is a 3d model otherwise you can do a 2d planner structural analysis and uh, idea here is to get uh, the design forces for each and every structural element for each and 
every um, joint and then design based on um, Indian standards, uh, the, those joints and uh, uh, those columns and be. Okay, and um, you know, again, uh, these softwares nowadays incorporate Indian standards, and through these softwares, automatically, for worst possible scenario, uh, you can uh, design your building. Uh, also, the AutoCAD is another software which is very important nowadays. Earlier, you know, drafting or the, the drawings were made by draftsmen um, manually, but nowadays, through AutoCAD, you can generate all the drawings. In fact, some of these softwares are automatically connected with AutoCAD. So once you do the design, you will get the, the structural uh, design made based on the uh, based on the design. Uh, let me also briefly tell you about the concrete mix design. There are two kinds of uh, you know uh, mix design. One is nominal mix design, and another one is uh, uh, design mix. So one is nominal mix and design mix. Earlier, uh, you know, if you are using a lower grade of concrete, suppose M10 or M15, then you can have a nominal mix design. Nominal mix design is given in IS456, which stipulates, suppose you are doing M15 grade concrete, then you have to, you know, mix concrete aggregate the fine aggregate and uh, the coarse aggregate in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 4. So that is a nominal mix. It's a prescriptive guideline which is given in the standard with minimum uh, you know, water cement ratio and uh, um, minimum cement content. You just mix one in, in a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 4, uh, your cement fine aggregate and uh, your coarse aggregate and you get the mix. So that is called nominal mix. But over the years, it has been found that uh, there is a wastage of material and uh, you don't get the, the desired performance parameters uh, of concrete if you do it with nominal mix. So nowadays, uh, most of the buildings, when you are doing such a large project or where there is a, um, such a mass use of concrete, you normally go for concrete mix design. And concrete mix design, again, there are Indian standards available based on those um, uh, standards, you can uh, do the mix design. And as you can see, this is the mix design uh, for um, uh, M40 uh, and M35 concrete uh, uh, for for the Chile project. And I have been repeatedly telling you that, um, you know, the concrete mix design and uh, quality of concrete is of paramount importance because primarily your all structural elements are made of uh, concrete. And so if the concrete, if the quality of concrete is not good, uh, good your um, structure will not, uh, you know, comply with the performance parameters okay and uh, another uh, salient feature a special feature of this project is that we are using ggbs ggbs is ground granulated glass furnace slag and this slag is a byproduct of our steel industry so it's a base material which is being added in the cement up to 15 percent you know the cement is replaced by ggbs and this ggbs being finer uh, finer uh, pozuronic material it gives uh, you know better strength and uh, we save uh, cement uh, also, the concrete which is made using this waste product is clean and sustainable. Also, uh, admixture is used uh, for uh, you know quick setting and for early setting. In precast component, what happens when you cast these elements in the factory? You require early strength. Normally, uh, you know early strength will uh, enable you to demold. Uh, your structural elements early and then uh, you can uh, do the curing and then you can take them uh, those components to the side. So for early setting and for early strength admixtures are being added. Uh, also, you see in this slide, uh, we have written m -Sand. m -Sand stands for manufactured sand. In um, the region of Chennai, um, you don't get river sand, so you have to use manufactured sand. Manufactured sand uh, is nothing but, uh, you know, it is a quarry and it is made of uh, quarry and stone dust. So, manufactured sand instead of natural river sand is being uh, used here. And, uh, you know, as uh, I was telling you, M40 stands for, uh, you know, compressive strength of uh, the cube, of concrete cube. 40 newton per meter uh, millimeter square and by using this uh, you know concrete mix design uh, we are uh, you know achieving uh, the, the concrete strength at seven days 46 which is far above than your 40. so the entire material optimization use of waste material use of admixture for early strength and uh, getting better compressive strength you know make your concrete and the the, the design uh, sustainable and great Normally, uh, when you do a big project, uh, a batching plant is also installed at the site. Uh, 
briefly, if I have to explain you the batching plant, uh, through batching plant, you are industrializing the, the production of concrete. Otherwise, what happens if you go to the old times uh, where we used to have artisans at the site? So what uh, we have, we, we normally just by weight um, or just by, you know, guess uh, we mix concrete, we make concrete by mixing cement, um, you know, one bag of cement with uh, so many, um, um, you know, uh, there are wooden boxes through which uh, material aggregate and sand are measured and then over a platform you mix all those things and then add water and there are thumb rules through which uh, concrete is being made but that is uh, 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 that is not a professional way of making concrete the professional way of making concrete is through batching plant and what you see here these are the silos which um, you know keep um, uh, aggregates, uh, fine aggregates, coarse aggregated cement, and then through a weighing process, you know, automated, uh, very accurate weighing process, you mix all these components and then make the concrete. So uh, that is about batching plant. Now, um, based on this design uh, basis uh, and uh, uh, based on the technology which I told you, let's move to the next step and next step is casting of precast element. Uh, uh, it is also very important that uh, casting is uh, uh, of these elements uh, uh, are done in strict in strict controlled conditions in the factory or casting yard also uh, if you happen to visit any casting yard you will find modern sophisticated processes being employed for casting of these elements let me take you through the factory setup. This uh, this is a uh, slide from uh, BG Showcase plant uh, at Chennai itself, and uh, this slide shows you uh, uh, these are the you know beam and column elements, and this is uh, the reinforcement. So once you, this is a mold, this is a steel mold, and uh, then you lay the reinforcement cage, and all these cage are automatically made uh, through modern machines, and uh, you know very accurate one, and then you do the concrete and once concreting is uh, done then these uh, uh, beams are uh, you know these molds are demolded and then these uh, beams are these beams and columns are cured um, through auto -clearing. and uh, curing is also fast here it is not a natural curing with water um, which we do normally in case of cast in situ construction uh, for 7 14 days here the, the curing uh, is expedited uh, by you know through to a chamber in a chamber um, under pressure and under heat so what you do querying is uh, you know curing uh, is done uh, through autoclaving and autoclaving is nothing but pressurized heated curing of these structure elements which enable you know um, fast gain of strength and um, early demolding and then early use of these structure elements okay so all these elements and another thing i want to emphasize here it, this setup is like um, you know automobile setup nowadays you know everything can be done in a in a spice fashion so you have uh, um, you know uh, workforce employed and then each uh, the person is given a special task one person will put a steel cage one person will um, check the steel cage then um, there will be automatic hopper through which concrete will be poured and once concrete is poured uh, you know the next day it will be demolded and then it will uh, you know put to a curing chamber and once it is cured then automatically it will be hoisted and it will be stacked okay so what you see see here is the reinforcement cage and the moment you reach here you see the concrete is being made and what you see on the upper side these are the intentionally left u bars you know uh, so that uh, you can connect it this um, uh, with the, the with the slab to ensure monolithic action this is a um, uh, casting of slab, uh, again partially precast slab. So this is a huge setup. Again, uh, the picture is from uh, BG Shirke Casting Yard at Chennai. And you can see all these things are automatically being done. So these are uh, casting tables where you know, reinforcement is being laid. And this is a concrete hopper through which uh, concrete is poured. And all openings and everything is pre-decided. You can, in fact, uh, put the, the, the service lines also, you know, uh, service lines also here and then do the concreting. And once the concreting is done, then the are automatically move further and uh, what you see here this is a curing chamber they are put in the curing chamber and once curing is done they are stacked outside and then transported to the uh, site and all these you know the, in fact 
for cutting, for dimensional uh, accuracy and all, even robots uh, are being used uh, and, you know, laser cutting and uh, laser marking of these slabs to obtain highest dimensional accuracy and highest dimensional, um, you know, um, reinforcement laying and other things. Also, let me tell you uh, another thing, because these elements are thin and these are RCC, you know, reinforced concrete. So um, there are two components, one is reinforcement and another one is concrete. So, you know, we need to provide sufficient cover to a reinforcement whenever we are doing any structural element. So um, when you do a cast in situ construction, sometimes it is found that uh, the cover is not properly maintained. But in this kind of control condition and factory setup uh, and in slice system, uh, there, there is a proper cover which ensures, um, you know, better durability uh, of RCC construction. Now, once you do the construction, this is how, uh, this is a table which is being uh, tilted. Uh, so this is a precast slab. And, uh, you know, again, uh, the, the, the stacking of these element elements, uh, precast elements uh, is very important because, you know, uh, there should not be any damage to these elements when, uh, during stacking and uh, while transporting these elements to the site. So everything has to be decided beforehand and how stacking is to be done. Stacking is to be done in such a manner that you can do the curing. There should be proper uh, air circulation. So this is how uh, curing is done. And this is how uh, you can see here. This is how um, through a crane again triggered up, you can uh, just lift the, the, the um, precast partially precast slab and uh, stack it from this is uh, the, the precast staircase which is being lifted and these are the precast uh, columns uh, so uh, this is how casting is being done now uh, once you do the casting then uh, casting and when uh, the elements uh, reach uh, to their uh, strength then you transport these elements in a especially made trailers okay suppose you have a big element then you you, you have to use a frame otherwise if you are you had long trailers you have to use and uh, these elements uh, need to be transported to the site and and then at site these elements are erected aligned and erected aligned and then wet connected to create our entire uh, structure Okay, so uh, in this project uh, in Chennai, uh, I will show you through on-site actual uh, on-site photographs uh, um, uh, the various components, uh, uh, what is the present status and how they are being connected to and other structure materials. So um, these construction sequence again is divided into uh, mainly two two parts. One is substructure, another one is superstructure, and substructure is your foundation part. Okay, so the foundation and uh, the, the structural system up to the ground level. So that is called substructure and above the ground or above the plane, you have superstructure, which again comprises of structural system floors and uh, your wall panels and then a slide on, uh, you know, uh, plumbing and electrical and the finishing. So uh, let me just show you those uh, photographs. But before getting into those uh, the side photographs, uh, you know, most important thing once you do the design and execute it in the field is structural drawings. Detailed structural drawings need to be need to be made available to the site engineer, and site engineer should be sufficiently educated to read these structural drawings. It is very important that how these structural drawings are being uh, read or are being referred. So uh, I, I, this is a structural drawing which gives you foundation there. So because you have a ground which is, uh, you have to prepare that ground and you have to, uh, you know, uh, locate uh, all uh, the you know, foundations, you know, accurately. So what you see here, this rectangle, if you see, so this is the, the center point of your foundation and uh, this is, uh, this is the Pit, the, the, what you see dotted is a the, you know dimension of a pit, the pit which you excavate, and this uh, the, uh, line which you see here, uh, the, the solid line. This is the the, the outer boundary of your uh, foundation uh, plan. Okay, so this is typical foundation plan, and so you have to refer this uh, foundation plan. Then you have to carefully mark uh, these uh, center points, and then you have to care carefully excavate, and then carefully mark, put the molds, and then do the concreting. And here, as I told you earlier as well, uh, that the, the foundations are cast in situ. In, uh, you, in times to come, you can also, you know, um, cast these foundations in the factory and then uh, put it uh, over 
the site. But right now, we are not doing it because of different uh, soil conditions uh, across India. And um, you know, the, these are typical structural um, reinforcement details of uh, of the, 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 the foundation because here we are using isolated foundations so these are the uh, the reinforcement how the horizontal reinforcement is to be laid and how this reinforcement um, um, is um, um, is to be connected with the with the column which will be erected over this uh, foundation all these details are given here and let me again tell you there are two three codes which are very important one is is 456 another one is 13920 so these code these codes in detail give you how the connections are to be made what is the the length uh, you know lap length what is the the length which will go into the beam what what is the the, the length of connection between um, uh, you know the foundation slab and the column so all these things are given in these drawings and uh, then these drawings are being referred and according to these drawings reinforcement cages are laid and then concrete is being done there is another thing if you see this this is this is called stirrup and in case of earthquake stirrup also plays very important role so proper tying of stirrup and proper spacing of uh, stirrup is also of paramount importance when we talk about earthquake resistance so all these details are given in these drawings and these drawings are prepared with uh, AutoCAD. So these drawings are given to the site engineers and depending upon uh, these uh, drawing structural drawings, detailed drawings and uh, you know th these are called section and this is a foundation layout and plan. So based on these sections and plan, uh, you can start uh, doing the foundation work. Also, let me tell you here because uh, this is the implementation of uh, new technologies. All these drawings need to comply with Indian standard number one. Then, secondly, these all drawings need to be vetted by uh, a third party, and uh, in our, our case, the third party is uh, IIT. So, all these drawings need to be vetted uh, by IIT. And as you can see, this uh, blue stamp here, um, it's a sign of a um, you know a professor from academic institution, preferably a structural engineer. Which um, you know, which uh, uh, certifies that this drawing is prepared based on prevailing Indian standard and comply to the specification given in the contract document. So that is also very important vetting of structural banks. Uh, uh, just to show you in detail, um, uh, again, uh, the, the picture, this is the, the, the section and this is how the concrete, uh, this is how the foundation and uh, this is the column and this is the plate. So let me again, um, um, uh, you know, uh, devote few minutes here. So this is your foundation uh, uh, slab. So this is an isolated footing and this is the reinforcement gate, which is put in the horizontal direction. And this reinforcement, which is put, uh, you know, in the horizontal cage, it has to, you know, bend like this. Okay, this is also very important, which is given in code. Then once you lay the horizontal reinforcement, then you have to put some vertical bars, which those bars will be connected with the stem column. So this is, uh, you know, first you laid the PCC. This, the, what you see here is M10, uh, you know, plain cement concrete, just for labeling the ground, because ground is normally undulated. So for labeling the ground, you lay the PCC. Over PCC, you make the this isolated footing of foundation slab with double, uh, you know, with bars, uh, vertical bars inserted and over these vertical bars, this column. So this, this can be called a stem column or this can be called uh, as a normal column. This column is laid up to the ground level or to the plinth level. And at the plinth level, again, a plinth beam uh, is put. Again, this is precast, this is precast, and this is cast in situ. So you put the vertical bars and then you lay the uh, uh, the stem column and then you put the plinth beam and then you do the wet jointing here and here. What you see here, this is the cast in situ. This is precast and then uh, this concreting is done um, uh, on site to ensure monolithic behavior. And as you can see, this bar uh, is going inside uh, uh, the column so that this beam and column uh, behave together. Okay, so that is called monolithic action and uh, these things are written here as you can see um, if you have isolated footing and if the, the, the columns are nearby then isolated footing is converted into combined footing that means that for both the columns you will have same footing so that is called combined footing and here um, the safe bearing capacity uses 25 ton per meter square and uh, you know as i told you that pcc is laid and over uh, which uh, the, the depth of foundation again as per structural design here in this case it is around 450 uh, millimeters 
millimeter or 45 centimeter is the depth of the footing okay and the grade of the concrete is m35 uh, um, also the uh, chennai uh, being a uh, coastal region so all this reinforcement which is uh, being put here uh, is put with anti corrosive coating and the, the, the soil, um, once you analyze the soil, it was found that it has high chloride content. And high chloride content means that um, it, it, it is corrosive in nature. So you have to do anti-corrosive nature so that uh, the, there is, uh, you know, onset of corrosion is uh, prohibited. Uh, so that is another important thing uh, which needs to be done if uh, you are doing where the water table is high or in a corrosive environment or where the chloride content is um, high. Also, the, all the exposed surf uh, surfaces because this, this will be directly and once you make this column that this this entire portion will be backfilled okay backfilling means whatever soil you have excavated that need to be filled again with you know with in layer uh, in layers with proper compaction and this soil being high in chloride content the in all these exposed surfaces uh, have been applied with vitamin p before the film. Okay, so all these concrete exposed surfaces are, um, you know, uh, coated with the vitamin. All this reinforcement uh, before laying this reinforcement, they are, um, you know, coated with anti corrosive coating. Okay, and with this, let me show you the the, the picture of uh, actual site picture. So this is how excavation is uh, taking place. Once you do the excavation, refer to the structure line, do the layout and then uh, do the, 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 the concreting for uh, uh, foundation uh, slab and then uh, you know bring the stem columns and plane beam and direct this. So, so one by one I will show you all those pictures from the site. So again um, this I wanted to show you here because when uh, it's uh, it's a coastal region number one Chennai, secondly the water table is high in coastal regions so normally during rainy seasons um, the, um, you know water table becomes high and when you are going deeper the water comes out from the ground so how to do um, the concreting here you have to you know run the, 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 the continuously you have to um, train this uh, water uh, through water pumps and sometimes to you know stop the use of water you have to use bentonite slurry so that the, 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 the the water which is pouring out, oozing out, can be stopped. So continuous uh, while laying the, 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 the foundation, you have to pump out or train the, 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 the water, groundwater. So this is how the excavation pit look like. And uh, once you, um, another thing, uh, once you, uh, you know, excavate the pit, you have to stabilize uh, these uh, walls, okay, these soils. Okay, if it is a clay soil, then um, you know it, it can be still uh, as it is. Otherwise, you know you have to compact it so that while doing the the foundation, it should not cave in. Okay, and so this is how the PCC is being laid, and uh, I told you PCC is just for labeling the ground. Okay, so hundred mm thick PCC, which is normally M10 or M7.5 concrete, um, which is laid, and just to make the surface plain. And the, this is uh, that uh, dotted line which I wanted to show you. Over this, you will uh, lay, lay the, the the foundation slab. Okay, and uh, another special feature of this project is because the, the, the bearing capacity is quite high, 25 ton per meter square. So normally at the site, uh, once you start excavation, so where you are going to lay your foundation, you do you uh, do a plate load test just to ascertain uh, the, the, the bearing capacity which you have uh, used for your uh, uh, structural design. Okay, and safe bearing capacity. Another catch is if you find through plate load tests, uh, safe bearing capacity less or more. Uh, if it is less, then you design uh, for the, the bearing capacity which you have. If it is uh, more, then um, you, you can design it for more. Uh, okay, and uh, so we here just to show you, uh, it's again a good practice that uh, the, to be doubly sure about the bearing capacity, you do the actual load, plate load test, which uh, gives you the actual uh, uh, safe bearing capacity uh, of the region. Uh, the, the now, once uh, PCC is laid, uh, this slide uh, shows uh, this is a reinforcement cake which I was telling you. So, this is a horizontal vertical reinforcement which, as per your design, for the worst load combination, 
Uh, so in, 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 in a reinforcement field, what is important? The tie of the reinforcement and the spacing in both the directions. That is important. And secondly, this length. I mean, this length, how much uh, length is to be left, uh, uh, that is again given in course. So that is also very important. So once you uh, lay this uh, reinforcement cage, then you put this vertical reinforcement, which will uh, go into the stem column. And again, why these bars are being left so that this um, uh, foundation and uh, this column acts together monolithically. So structural integrity is very important to ensure that structural integrity. Uh, we need to leave, uh, uh, we need to have this kind of material. And this vertical OR is also, you know, put like this. So again, this entire thing is given in a code that depending upon the diameter, what should be uh, this, um, uh, you know, lap, uh, length, okay? So this is called lap length. So this length is again decided and then this kind of thing is then done. And after this, the concreting is done, cast in situ. And these are, um, you can see these are isolated footing and uh, then if you combine two footings together, if you cast, then this is called, this is called combined footing. So after laying the reinforcement cage, uh, you do the concreting and once, con now this, this is, once the concreting is done, so this is how your foundation slab is, um, foundation slab looks like. And uh, you can see this is the reinforcement, which is left um, in the footing and over this reinforcement, this stem column is being laid. Okay, and so this uh, this um, uh, vertical reinforcement and then the, the reinforcement of this column are connected together and then bed jointing is done so that uh, there is a monolithicity at this joint. Uh, it is a closure loop. Uh, this you can see, this is a, a isolated footing or a foundation slab. And then this is the that stamp column. Again, as I told you that that stamp columns are uh, made in the factory or in the casting yard, and then they are transported and aligned and erected at the site like this. And again, there is a notch here over which the pre beam will come. And here, uh, the reinforcement of this stamp column will be connected with the, the, the reinforcement of your uh, foundation slab. So, and then, uh, the concreting will be done at the site. So uh, this slide shows you, um, and this is that bitumen which I was telling you because it needs to be backfilled uh, uh, again. So bitumen is being put uh, here because the soil um, has a higher uh, chloride content. Also, all these column um, cores, you know, uh, their dimensional accuracy is very important. So uh, there is a welded wire mesh which is being used, which I will show you later uh, to maintain that, uh, you know, the inner dimension of the column need to be maintained accurately. So for that, um, uh, there is a welded wire mesh, uh, you know, which is equal to the size of your column core, stem column core, which is known as extra mesh, uh, which is uh, put inside. Okay, and then um, uh, uh, this is how it looks like. Once you make the foundation, then you do the stem column. Okay, and uh, you can call them, uh, um, there are various nomenclatures. So the, sometimes a uh, small pedestal is also made, but here, um, you know, uh, you are just uh, connecting your foundation slab with this stem column, and here you are making it, um, you know, connecting it with the plinth beam. I will show you in another slide. Also, uh, the, the typical size of the stamp column is 450 by 450 mm, and it, the height is up to print level. And uh, the, the, the bars in this are uh, four bars of 20 dia and four. So there are eight um, the, the bars, uh, eight uh, bars of 20 and uh, 16 uh, diameters, uh, which are put as vertical reinforcement, which are connected with uh, stirrups here. Clear reinforcement because it's a corrosive environment. So reinforcement, again, there is a table given in IS456, uh, which says that um, in, in a hostile or an aggressive environment, the, the minimum uh, cover, clear cover to the reinforcement should be 40. And this cover is also very important because if you give insufficient cover, the, your building will get corroded and the life uh, of the building uh, will get considerably reduced. Okay, and um, again, as per Indian standard, uh, the, 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 the uh, ordinary Portland cement is being used, which is of normally 43 grade cement is used, but uh, for foundation below ground level, uh, OPC cement of grade 53 with, uh, you know, C3A content 5 to 8 uh, percent, you know, calcium alumina um, content 5 to 8 percent is uh, recommended here uh, for uh, stem columns. 
right, for, uh, for concreting the bill of foundation. Now, um, again, this is a picture from the site. Um, already this project has started in January and uh, already we have reached uh, up to the um, uh, you know, fifth floor um, in this project. So once you do, uh, once you do this uh, stem column, then what you do, uh, you do the backfilling. And as I was telling you, this black thing is a bitumen layer. And after doing that bitumen layer, you do the backfilling. So now this is a print level where you will put the plate paper. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, you, you normally put a Haitian cloth um, uh, to do the, you know, to uh, protect the, your reinforcement. Because uh, if you are in a coastal region, the reinforcement, although you are putting an anti corrosive uh, coating, but, uh, you know, because of ingress of water and other things, this may get, uh, this may get uh, uh, corroded. So Haitian cloth is being put for curing as well as for protecting this reinforcement uh, from the, the corrosion. Now, um, after this backfilling, you are, uh, I showed you those notches and in those notches, this uh, plinth uh, um, beams are being uh, put. And now it is uh, clear to you, this is a plinth beam and you have reached up to a plinth level. And then this is that column. And, and these are those hollow, um, you know, um, uh, hollow uh, core, which is left. And now here the completing will be done. So the advantage, this is the uniqueness of this technology uh, here you will do the wet uh, jointing means uh, this these joints will be filled with self compacting concrete and the moment you, know, you are putting a, a you know reinforcement here and you are doing a, a you know wet jointing through self compacting concrete it means you have made this joint monolithic the other, uh, you know, practice which is being used uh, is nut and bolt connection. So what you do um, in, um, you know, these uh, uh, beams and columns, you put a uh, you you put a plate, a steel plate, and through nut and bolts, you um, and then you gout some bars, and and then those bars are connected to nut and bolts. So that is another type of connection. But uh, uh, I recommend uh, that whenever you are doing a, a precast concrete construction, always go for uh, wet jointing because wet jointing means uh, a little bit of cast in situ connection, which will ensure uh, structural integrity uh, at the columns, at the joints. Okay, so after erection of these hollow core stem columns and these uh, you know precast plinth beam, uh, they are put in these notches and then do the concrete. Uh, just to give you another uh, view of this is also very important. These columns uh, or and these beams, their reinforcement need to comply with the um, standard that is uh, IS 13920, which gives in detail uh, the detailing of your uh, column reinforcement. And detailing is very important to ensure ductile behavior of any RCC element, whether it is beam or whether it is uh, column. Okay, so this is the kind of detailing which is to be done when you are connecting two bars, then how it is to be detailed, what should be the spacing of your stirrups, all these things are given, how stirrups are to be bent, how many um, the bars are to be put, and all these details are uh, given in a strike and can be uh, read from uh, these strikes. And for foundation, we are using M35, and whereas for columns and beams, we are using M40. And uh, I already uh, told you that the clear cover is uh, uh, 40, uh, uh, 40 mm. Okay, and stem columns are 450 by 450, whereas the, the, the size of column above ground uh, is 350 by uh, 350 uh, mm. Okay, and um, these uh, hollow core uh, precast columns are filled with self compacting concrete, and that uh, concreting is done uh, uh, with beam and uh, columns, with beam and uh, slabs. This is that hexa mesh I was talking about when uh, the, the casting of column is uh, done to ensure that dimension, internal dimensions accurately. This uh, welded wire mesh is inserted. So you, you can see this if you see the section. So this is that extra mesh. Again, this is a, a innovative uh, thing which is being done in this project uh, by by the, the agency. They put this uh, extra, uh, you know, X, they call it extra mesh, which is a welded wire mesh to ensure uh, the uh, dimensional accuracy. This is a kind of a sacrificial form, form work which is used to maintain the dimensional uh, accuracy. 
Also, a sleeve of 60 mm die is created in the column at the time of casting to insert a steel rod with hook to lift the column. Now, this column is to be lifted at the site because you are making this column in the factory and then this column is to be taken to the site and then, uh, you know, aligned and properly aligned and erected at the site in sync with the um, you know foundation uh, uh, the foundation the slab so what is done a sleeve is created and in this a sleeve at the time of casting is created a 60 mm dia and in this you put a seal rod and then to hook you lift this so all these things are to be integrately designed and decided beforehand so this is the lifting arrangement for um, your precast column and similar arrangements are done for beams and for slabs where you you know leave hooks you know reinforcement hooks in the at a uh, few places and through those uh, hooks you lift the, the the column beam as well as slabs now um, you can see here once you have reached uh, at the plinth level this is your uh, plinth and then you uh, above plinth you have to uh, put uh, the, the the columns okay the, the ground floor columns and then again you have to put the slab and then over that uh, another story will come so now we have reached this is the your ground level or a plinth level over this now um, we, uh, the, the, the columns precast columns are being erected and uh, you can see this is a um, closure look so uh, once you have reached the plinth level you are you have erected this column uh, precast column of the ground floor and then uh, these are again uh, beams uh, floor beams which are again uh, precast and then uh, they are uh, put like this uh, over this a slab will come and uh, again that slab will be precast and then all these slab beam and column will be uh, you know cast together cast in c2 but through a screed concrete so that there is one of the three and you can see here uh, wherever we have a, uh, a sunshade or this is called lintel um, this uh, is again precast and inserted in between here like this so all sun shades are put and uh, this is a ground floor column with a ground floor um, uh, first floor beam um, they, they, they are put into notches uh, through a proper lifting and uh, you know clean arrangement and now over this we will uh, put the slab uh, again i'd like to show you that how connection uh, connections are being uh, grouted or how the concreting is being done so through a hopper concreting is being done in already laid reinforcement um, so this is a slab which is laid and this is a column and this is a beam and this is how concreting is being done okay so uh, this is a bed jointing and this is a finished um, stem uh, column with plinth beam and this is uh, if you are putting a you know uh, if beam is put like this with the columns and here also uh, grouting is done with notching grouts and this is again a special grouts are available uh, of uh, uh, you know concrete so these grouting uh, is done to ensure this is connected with this okay and uh, this is that notch uh, how it is being filled up so all these connections and jointing of various structural components are accomplished through in situ self compacting concrete and i will uh, tell you what self comp uh, compacting concrete uh, in, in the end of my lecture and um, wherever you have uh, you know the smaller um, the, you know the course there you can do the micro concreting or you can do the notch grout you know as per structural and this has to comply with the, the various uh, provisions which are laid down in our code course okay um, uh, this is a typical uh, beam column joint uh, showing monolithic action and continuity. This, uh, so this is how you, you can see. And, uh, this is beam and this is column and this is that filled up. Uh, so this is before jointing. As you can see, before jointing, this is that column and this is your exposed beam and this entire thing is being, uh, you know, uh, filled uh, with the, uh, the with self compacting concrete. And once it is finished, it looks like this. Various details, uh, typical beam and column details I uh, wanted to show you. This is that uh, sunshade detail I was telling you. So with beam only, that sunshade is being cast and the reinforcement, again, it has to strictly follow uh, the ductile detailing code. So the, the continuity of reinforcement is very important when we are talking about joints, okay? So reinforcement, all the reinforcement need to go into the joint and there should be a sufficient lap. So this, this shows that lap and again, it is given in the code. 
Similarly, uh, this is that hook I was talking about. You, you, you cast up to this the beam and call beams, and then this is left as it is, which is being cast with the with the slab. So these are typical um, uh, beam details, and similarly. Uh, uh, this is a typical joint between beam and column. So this is your beam and this is your column and how beam and columns are connected is shown here. Again, uh, the, the, the gray portion which you see um, is your precast one and this is what is done at cast in situ. So this bar is left like this, this bar is left like this and then uh, with the column they are connected like this. This is a staircase de detail. Uh, in fact, during Bhuj, uh, Gujarat earthquake, it was found that uh, staircases uh, uh, also led to the failure of the entire building. So uh, the, the, the connection of staircase with the um, structure is very important. So there are two kinds of things. Either you integrate your um, uh, uh, staircase with the, the existing structure, or otherwise isolate the staircase and lift well from the uh, overall uh, structure. So after the Bhuj earthquake staircase, um, you know there was there, there were special clauses uh, for design and detailing of staircases. So this is how the staircase is being uh, detailed, and uh, uh, this this is the the detail of the staircase. How reinforcement is being put, and that how this reinforcement will uh, go uh, into the the landing. That is all also shown, and how this reinforcement is to be connected with precast beam. That is also connected. The basic philosophy which you must always remember that no reinforcement should terminate in at the joint. It has to go inside another structure you know, another uh, structural element, whether it is beam or column, sufficient. Okay, so like in this case, this lap has to be 300 mm, which will ensure, you know, continuity of this. So that is the thing. Because what happens um, normally, um, it, it is asked that joints do not behave properly in the precast element. So uh, to answer that, uh, the engineering solution is to provide the reinforcement uh, well into the joints and uh, then doing the connection, uh, uh, you know, doing wet connections uh, to achieve monolithicity so that uh, it behaves like a monolithic concrete construction. Uh, this slide shows you the slab. Once uh, you have uh, uh, reached at the floor level, so uh, you have erected the column uh, and then you have erected this beam with sun shades and everything and then you bring the uh, slab which is again partially precast again casting the slab so now you are laying this slab once you lay this slab what you see is this reinforcement this reinforcement so normal reinforcement will be put here and the entire thing will be cast with self with screen and the joints will be filled with uh, with uh, self compact concrete so the, uh, everything is precast but jointing is being done at the side to ensure moments. so this is the beauty of this technology or uh, this is the uniqueness of this precast concrete construction because here um, most of the work you are doing in the factory but jointing you are doing at the site with cast in c2 and high performance concrete so after erection of beams and columns uh, Precast slabs are placed, and uh, another important thing is bearing. You know, bearing means uh, what should be the, uh, the, the, the land support, how much uh, should be the width of the support of this slab with the beam. So that is called bearing. So again, bearing uh, for bearing, you need to refer to the code and uh, minimum bearing uh, when you are putting a slab over beam. Is given in code so that bearing need to be ensured. If you don't provide that much bearing, what will happen? Your uh, uh, slab may fail in shell. Okay, uh, because of that, there will be a bearing failure. Okay. And this is a typical uh, reinforcement detail as I have been, uh, I'm time and again showing you these structural drawings because the structural drawings are the most important. Um, you know, trying which need to be referred time and again if you want to assure quality at the site. So that the structural drawing is given to site engineer, and whenever um, you know a 
quality check is being made. So this structural drawing is being referred and uh, uh, seen uh, to see the spacing, see the diameter of reinforcement, seeing the lap lengths and other, other details about the reinforcement. So this is a typical reinforcement detail of a column. And, and as you can see, these are those lattice, uh, um, you know, lattice, uh, the rubber lattice bars, which are uh, being left. And then uh, uh, here the reinforcement is put in horizontal uh, and vertical, uh, horizontal directions, and then screed is put over that to ensure uh, uh, monolithic or st uh, structural integrity. And uh, if you see in section, it looks like this. So this portion is cast in the factory, and this portion is left where the horizontal reinforcement is put at the side, and then screeding is uh, done along with the main column. Okay. Again, um, I, uh, as I was telling you, the cover to the reinforcement is very important. And whenever you are doing a slab, the reinforcement as per Indian standard is 20 mm. So 20 mm reinforcement is to be provided here. And, uh, you know, wherever you have uh, you know, discontinuity of reinforcement, then you have nowadays splicing can be done mechanically, where two reinforcement can be connected together. Because suppose you are putting this reinforcement and this reinforcement is broken, um, you know, discontinued here and you have to put another reinforcement. Then at the point of, um, you know, where you are putting two reinforcement, they need to be properly joined. So they can be joined through mechanical splicing. splicing. So that is also given. And um, this lap length is also very important that how much this bar should bend. That is called lap length. And normally this is 40 dia, 40, uh, 40 times the diameter of um, your your bar which you are using so that lap length is also very important uh, to ensure uh, good earthquake resistance then um, how uh, typical uh, the beam and slab are connected this is the detail again this gray portion is uh, precast and that's the, the, the portion which you see above this is concreting cast in situ concreting and this is your beam and this is your slab so what is being done uh, this reinforcement is uh, this is that uh, the hook which is coming and through this hook we put a bar and then we do the concreting so now because of this bar and because of this hook and the reinforcement horizontal reinforcement uh, this joint becomes monolithic it means this is fully integrated with slab and beam and it will behave more logical. okay and this is that lap length i am talking about so this this is a minimum lap length which need to be provided means this bar from here it should at least go 0.3 times the length of this span 0.3 times of this span so this is um, you know um, three meters so one meter is the lap length which need to be provided Okay, and this is the bearing I was talking about. So the minimum bearing is again given in the code so that if you don't provide this bearing, the, the slab will fail in uh, bear, uh, in bearing pressure. So that that uh, bearing need to be provided as per codal requirement. So this is a slab, this is a, a precast beam, and then how it is to be put. And then uh, this kind of hook, which we are putting, we put our enforcement in horizontal direction, and then we do this inverted beam kind of thing. And this uh, uh, is the So this is how uh, floor and slab uh, are joined together. And why I'm showing you these lines because jointing is the most important thing in, in, in precast concrete construction and joint will, um, you know, dictate the, the overall behavior of your building. And uh, this is a panoramic view. Uh, now you can see here, uh, this is the column, this is that beam, this is that sunshade, then we have laid that uh, slab. And as I was telling you, the, the, the partially precast slab and these hooks are left. And on these hooks, that horizontal reinforcement will be, be um, horizontal reinforcement in both the directions will be laid. And then that is screed and the jointing, uh, all these columns, core, core of columns and these beams, they all will be uh, cast together, cast in situ. And you know, the, the, in between also, uh, these are called uh, you know lattice uh, lattice beams, uh, uh, which uh, depending upon the span, uh, the, the, the reinforcement is put, and this is cast with the uh, screen. So uh, you can see here, uh, this is uh, the, uh, this is the reinforcement which is being laid. You can see here, yeah. Okay, so this is the reinforcement being laid, and then the the, the concreting will be done. Uh, that concrete is a high performance concrete. Normally, here the screed, uh, um, uh, the thickness of the screed is 55 uh, mm thick, which is uh, put over this to ensure monolithic and ductile behavior of the structure. 
And once you do the concrete uh, concreting, then you have to do the curing. Curing, friends, is very important for concrete structure. So structural integrity and monolithic behavior is achieved in this technology through wet jointing. I have been repeatedly using this word uh, because this is the uniqueness of uh, this technology. And dowel bars are the bars which are protruding or left um, while doing the, 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 the precast in, uh, in the um, factory or in the casting yard. And through those double bars, those double bars are connected with the, the reinforcement which is laid um, at the site and with the reinforcement of uh, other structural components. Okay, and then those joints are filled uh, with concrete of high strength. Okay, so this is again a view and once the um, uh, screening is done, then you have to do the cure. Next is, um, 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 the the spaces which is being created in between these frame that need to be filled so for filling of those spaces you need to create a wall so in this project we are using aac blocks for walls otherwise also um, you, you can use a drywall uh, which is a sandwich panel system um, which can be you know made in the factory in some projects they use precast uh, rcc wall uh, as well but in this project the um, aac blocks are being used so aac blocks have direct uh, you know, advantage over uh, burnt clay brick. AC blocks um, uh, are made with, uh, you know, it is a lightweight concrete and uh, they are made uh, with the lightweight precast foam concrete. And um, the, the, the composition, if you see of AC block, uh, it uses uh, gypsum, sand, lime, um, cement, water, and aluminum powder. This aluminum powder reacts with cement and uh, to create foam and it becomes a lightweight concrete. And its density, if you compare the density of AC blocks to the, the brick, brick uh, density is 1900 kg per meter cube and here the density is 550 450 to 500 which is very light in weight and being light in weight it reduces reduce, uh, uh, the wall um, you know um, the, the load of wall is considerably reduced and uh, therefore you have a um, be, uh, you know less uh, load on the foundation so your foundation um, uh, design is optimized uh, and AC blocks, because being um, foam concrete, they 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 they, be, uh, they are uh, better um, as far as functional performance is concerned. Means um, caustic and thermal wise, they, they perform better uh, as compared to you know uh, other thin elements. So AC block is another very important feature of this project. So all these infill walls are of AC block, and because we are using lightweight AC blocks, so they they are uh, non load bearing. Another thing, the typical size, these blocks are uh, slightly larger um, as compared to brick. Brick is your 230, uh, 230 by 150 by uh, 150 by 150 uh, by 75 mm, whereas the, these blocks are 600 by 200 and 150 mm. So being larger um, uh, block size, uh, you can uh, you know, speedily lay the, the infill walls and uh, being larger, there are less joint and uh, the, the, there is less consumption of uh, mortar while uh, you know, laying those walls. So there are several advantages. So AAC blocks are being used. Another important Important thing which I want to tell you is there is a word called autoclave. So autoclaving is a special curing, which means autoclaving is nothing but curing under heat and pressure. Normally, if you do uh, curing, normally curing takes 14 to 28 days and normally it is water cured. Concrete elements are water cured. So it's a um, time consuming process and uh, to, uh, to do, to do uh, fast curing, what is being done, curing you can uh, do under pressure and under heated conditions. So um, normally in pre-casting yard, you will find uh, curing under heat and pressure. And that is why within um, uh, no time, you can uh, you know, uh, manufacture these structural elements because curing is done uh, under heat and pressure. Uh, quality control is the backbone of any any construction which we do. Uh, so for all these projects, uh, all the agencies uh, need to uh, uh, you know install uh, a, a quality control lab at the site and typical quality control lab at site uh, you know comprises of post of equipments this which you um, the, the, the photograph which you see here uh, is a compression testing machine we are uh, at the site once you you know concrete is very important part of this uh, entire uh, precast concrete construction so um, the, 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 whenever you do any precasting uh, you need to ensure 
the quality of the concrete being used and the quality of concrete is ensured uh, by you know casting cubes and those cubes are later uh, you know tested for their compressive strength dimensional accuracy water absorption in the uh, in the quality layer as well as by the third party so this is this is how the cube is being tested um, under compression in a compression testing machine. So this is a, a CTM compression testing machine and um, you know you put, keep on putting the load and once it breaks that load you uh, capture from this machine and that load divided by the area of this cube will give you the compressive strength and that compressive strength of that con concrete has to be you know suppose you are using M40 so it has to be above M you know about 40 meter per mm square so that will assure your quality okay then similarly you are using different materials so the in this slide you see these are the sieves so you know normally sand and aggregates you know their size has to be perfect and so you know, it is called you know, green size distribution and through sieves you can find out the, the, the kind of aggregates you are using and uh, what it, what it, what are their, their respective sizes in addition to quality control uh, through this uh, testing at at site in the laboratory, um, then normally in the projects of such sizes, the uh, third party uh, quality control and assurance is also being done. And uh, for this project, IIT Madras uh, is assigned uh, as a third party inspection uh, and monitoring agency. Now, the, the, the plumbing and electrical, because it's a, a concrete construction, uh, so plumbing and uh, electrical services uh, are done in a conventional method, um, which is uh, chasing and filling. And um, uh, you know, you can you can put some openings while, while casting the, the slats and all slats and all for uh, putting you uh, your you know fan and all uh, you know fan and all. Otherwise, uh, casting uh, you know services are done with chasing and filling. Uh, this is just a slide. Uh, you know, there, there are other finishing items, you know, and the way you do finishing of your uh, conventional construction, same way you can do the finishing here. And uh, the, these projects are lighthouse projects. So in this lighthouse projects, we are putting a um, lot of uh, good uh, uh, practices such as, you know, street lights um, and uh, street lights. Uh, primarily LED lights and solar street lighting, sewage treatment plant is nowadays must, you know, um, then um, uh, the rainwater harvesting, solid waste management uh, and all other provisions which are required as per national building codes are being included in this uh, project. Um, this technology is also being used uh, the world over precast concrete construction and um, um, uh, everywhere in the world this technology has been successfully used in India also um, this technology is being used and the agency has uh, shown a few photographs uh, um, of their successfully completed projects uh, in and around India. You can see this and uh, uh, with this uh, any any kind of the precast another um, uh, you know, question asked is uh, the, the shapes, any kind of shape, any kind of facade uh, can be thought and can be cast in the factory and then can be assembled at the, the site. So um, any structure, whether it is residential or uh, whether it's industrial or whether it is a car parking or, um, you know, even a stadium uh, can be uh, constructed with precast concrete construction. So these are a few projects which uh, uh, I wanted to show you. Um, the, you know, in Mumbai, uh, in Maharashtra, this uh, precast concrete construction is being used uh, um, quite prominently. And um, you know, for their all EWS project, they are using this precast concrete construction. So um, this was all about uh, the lighthouse project. Uh, which I wanted to share with you at the moment, but as the project progresses, the, we will uh, show you uh, through uh, these lectures, uh, the further implementation uh, of the technology, and we will learn together the further implementation of the technologies. Another thing being technography, um, uh, you can always uh, visit these lighthouse projects uh, online virtually by going to this uh, uh, website gstcindia.gov.in. Once you enter this uh, website, you will uh, get uh, uh, a tab of live lab. And uh, once you you know uh, once you go to that tab, you will get the live status. So you can uh, go to that uh, project at Chennai and uh, can see the live status. For any other further information, you can always uh, contact uh, us on. Uh, uh, these emails.
Thank you.